Hi, I'm Rob Harrison. I'm a fifth year undergraduate student at the Spitzer School of Architecture at the City College of New York. Over the past year, I worked with Professor Mohamed Bahasani on a project involving design and fabrication of timber grid shell dwellings. Specifically, our project was to design a grid shell camping cabin. We hoped to build the cabin, and the requirements of a long-term building enclosure necessitated rigorous problem solving. We encountered several major challenges in the design process. First of all, our use of an enclosed grid shell meant form finding had to be done without prior specification of anchor points. The high curvature of the grid also required a form that the timber lats would naturally bend to. Finally, the exterior enclosure had to account for the constantly changing grid with detail assemblies that were robust and adaptable. Some of the past approaches to form finding were to use a hanging chain model, such as in the famous Mannheim grid shell, or to map a grid onto a three-dimensional form, such as in the Downland grid shell. Today, computational dynamic relaxation solvers can be used in form finding to simulate the behavior of bending structures. For our project, we use kangaroo physics as a solver. Here is a typical grid shell model I made that works by moving the anchor points inward. However, our use of the grid shell as a dwelling structure required an enclosed form. Because of the high curvature of the small structure, the form had to be such that the timber lats would naturally bend to. Unlike the previous example, anchor points could not simply be moved to deform the grid, since these points could not be predetermined. We devised a method of form finding for enclosed grid shells that requires no initial specification of form or anchor points. Our method of form finding uses loading on the nodes of the grid to create a form based on an input perimeter guide curve. The bending resistant grid acts like a flexible fabric, pulled into shape by upward loading of points inside the curve and downward loading of points outside the curve. After some experimentation, we discovered that we achieved better results by offsetting the downward forces and angling them toward the center to achieve steeper sides for more efficient space use in the finished grid shell. This is the result of the form finding process shown in the previous slide. As you can see, the final grid shell form is the white part of the grid remaining above the starting plane. The blue curve is the actual perimeter, which closely approximates the perimeter guide curve shown in black. Once the form finding process was complete, a location for an opening was chosen and the model prepared for structural analysis. For structural analysis, we used Caramba after testing it against SAP 2000. Our loading parameters were based on LRFD load combination from ASCE 7. The structure support points were anywhere the grid met the ground, and all the nodes were fixed connections. Here you can also see the final form chosen for our cabin, as well as the front opening used for a doorway and windows. The results of the structural analysis were more than sufficient for our requirements. Utilization is the used structural capacity compared to the total structural capacity of the members. Most of the structure remained below 12% utilization. Displacement is the movement of members from their unloaded position. We achieved an extremely low maximum displacement of 0.03 inches. This is because the structure is close to a funicular form and most of the loading is axial. The final parameters of our grid shell were a grid spacing of 1.5 feet and a lath section of 3 quarter inch by 1.5 inch for the material of red oak. Although we could have further reduced the structural strength, we settled on these parameters for considerations of constructability, aesthetics, and material availability. Throughout the structural design process, we used the Grasshopper Visual Programming Interface. Since Kangaroo and Karamba are both Grasshopper-based software, we achieved maximum parametric flexibility. This allowed us to explore many options to choose the best solution for our design needs. The second part of our project involved design of details for the enclosure of the grid shell cabin. The constantly changing form of a grid shell that makes it attractive is also what makes it so difficult to use as a useful building. Our goal was to design cladding details that could be built with typical tools and materials available to a carpenter. This would allow grid shells as dwellings to be less expensive and non-dependent on high-tech resources. 
Our philosophy for component design relied on strategic tolerance to accommodate the changing surface of the grid shell. Our strategy used small planar units to cover the grid rather than larger sheets or thin membranes. A full scale model was built of a portion of the grid shell shown in black to test and prove constructability and durability of cladding components. Some of the specific detail components that were designed for this project were node connectors, cladding panels, and windows. Grid shell nodes hold the crossing locations of the timber laths and clamp the assembly into a fixed connection. We used a simpler type of node with a pin through the center of the lath crossing. This also allowed us to add connector disks for the panels, as you will see on the next slide. This image shows the cladding panels as well as the node connector disks. The cladding panels act as a physical barrier, a thermal barrier, and a roof substrate. The panels are made of an outer layer of thick plywood, an intermediate insulation board layer, and an interior veneer plywood. A waterproof membrane as well as an exterior finish could be fastened to the outside of the panels. As visual connections to the outside, windows are important. However, as a complex assembly, they are difficult to adapt to changing geometry. We designed a window to be mounted inside of a cladding panel. Node connectors, cladding panels, and windows are essential components that directly address the grid shell structure. However, to build a grid shell as a dwelling requires many more innovative details, for which a knowledge of basic carpentry or construction techniques could be especially useful. Although grid shells are beautiful structures, they are extremely difficult to design and build. In my project, I tried to address many of these difficulties. I hope some of my solutions will help others to imagine timber grid shells as dwellings.